Big Daddy Milker's milking pasties time. Hello, beautifuls. Welcome back to my Chanel. Oh, oh dear. Oh no. My goodness me, my lovelies. Do I have a treat for you today? Oh, treats. Potentially a bad choice of words. First of all, how are we doing? How are we? Are we happy to see the back end of January? She's gone, never to be seen again, even though she did feel like she was about six and a half months long. I'm glad she's gone. I can continue with my life. A little update with Mr. Biscuits. He's currently chewing on a little toy next to me. He had a vaccination yesterday and he's been a little bit sleepy all day. So I'm just going to leave him. If he comes up, he can have cuddles and you can see him. But if not, no, no, no. So if you've seen the title of this video, you know what's coming, my lovelies. There was no shortage of a plethora, a plague, some might say, of unhealthy diet and exercise TV shows in the UK, in reality TV world, in the mid-2000s, shall we say. Today, my loves, today do I have a treat for you. Today is Super Size versus Super Skinny. Tiramisu. Even the name, even the name is quite a lot to handle right about now, isn't it, my lovelies? I'm going to give you all a little bit of a warning that today's episode is going to be potentially a little bit difficult to watch. I'm going to be a bit of a cautionary tale, shall we say, because we're probably going to hear some language about bodies that isn't particularly body positive, And also some language around like addiction and habit forming that also, in a similar vein, is not very healthy or helpful, shall we say. So I, in fact, did actually watch a couple of episodes of Super Size versus Super Skinny when it aired in the UK on television about, gosh, probably about 15 years ago now, probably even longer than that. Oh. Ugh, disgusting. Again, this is another one of those TV shows very similar to the last episode of the worst diet and exercise TV shows we've ever seen, which was Fat Families. Very similar. I don't think the language is quite as hateful in this one. Like, in Fat Families, it's all about like, oh my god, shame, 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 drama. Whereas I actually think in this one, we actually hear much more of a doctor's opinion about what is happening. Now, I'm not saying that doctors are always correct about everything, because reality is that's not quite the tea, is it? No, doctors make mistakes and also doctors can have biases. But I am more likely to listen to somebody who is a doctor than somebody who's just like, Mr. and Mrs. Massive Fatty. Mr. and Mrs. Massive Fatty. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? Honestly. So, do you want to hear what Super Size versus Super Skinny actually was? Well, let me tell you, my loves. Super Size versus Super Skinny was a TV program that aired in the UK between 2008 and 2015. 2008 sounds right. I can sort of imagine, if I cast my mind back, that I was in, like, college sort of time watching some of these episodes like that. That feels like a correct time frame. It is a British television show that aired on Channel 4 featuring information about dieting and extreme eating lifestyles. One of the main show features was a weekly comparison between an overweight person and an underweight person. The two were taken to a feeding clinic and lived together for five days, swapping diets while supervised by Dr. Christian Jessen. Now, Dr. Christian is a very influential gay doctor. Oh, have I outed him there? Uh, I don't think so. I think most people know that he's a gay doctor, right? Back in the day, he was the utmost heartthrob. Everyone was like, ah! Bukaki. Bukaki. Understandable. I mean, he's quite handsome. The problem in this show that I think I'm going to have with, which I don't know if you might pass an ethics board now to do, I'm not really sure, is comparing somebody who eats perhaps too much to somebody who eats perhaps too little and forcing them to swap diets without any sort of um, safeguarding, shall we say. Hopefully this show will prove us a bit different and hopefully it comes at more of an educational aspect rather than shock, shock, TV drama, shock, shock, drama, chat magazine. <laughs> With that being said, my lovelies, are you ready to dive into the world of Super Size versus Super Skinny? I've managed to acquire some episodes. I think they are heavily copywritten, so you will be watching them all on this side, tilted like this. Hang on. Ah! Oh, how do I operate my hands? Like this. Tilted like this. Unfortunately, I have to do that in order to avoid copyright and transform the content enough that the content ID system allows me to have it, even though these videos are technically educational and it falls under fair use. Unfortunately, the law doesn't seem to apply on YouTube, because in order to file a copyright claim, you're just basically begging the company that files the claim against you and saying, but please, but please, madam, I am doing this correctly. And they just go, no, and ignore the law. But 
you know, I'm only a small YouTuber, so I don't have the funding yet to be like litigation. Oops. Anyway, enough of all that. Grab yourself a beverage. It's again a monster for me. Grab your little ochenger, my lovelies, and pop it into your, what are we going to call this? Skinny hole? Pop it into your skinny hole? Oh, I don't know. It's a work in progress, that one. Oh, I do also want to put a little bit of a disclaimer in here, my loves. I am on a personal weight loss journey. I have been since 2019. If you watch the first video in this series, I go into more depth about my own personal journey from going from an overweight body to a normal normal sized body, even though I still am not quite at my goal weight. It's been in years, then we had a pandemic, and I'm just working towards it now. So I myself feel like I might be well equipped to also understand some of the hurtful words that happen in this show, potentially. Beautiful. Desperate to be super skinny? Desperate. Don't be. Oh. We're a nation of diet junkies obsessed with the size of our bodies and what we put in our mouths. Oh my gosh. And it's got to stop. This is... This current that, sorry, that was dramatic, wasn't it? What a, what a way to start an episode. This is season one, episode two. Literally starting with, don't. Don't do all that. Be careful what we put in our bodies. The message is a little bit frightening, but I guess it kind of does make sense. I must stop fidgeting on this chair. Every time I sit in these chairs now, I'm like, oh, I've got all these opinions. I just don't know what to do with myself. I put a whole bag of jelly beans up my ass. Becoming super skinny is pushing many young people's health and bodies into the danger zone. Oh, goodness. This, yeah, I think we might experience a little bit of like shame television in this one. So yes, I do feel like the phrasing there is a little bit strange because the narrator there has said, we're a nation of people forcing ourselves on a diet to be obsessed with health or something like this. Being obsessed with health does not mean being ultra, ultra skinny beyond what is like a healthy body weight? That's not what health means, so. While millions of us are getting bigger and bigger as we literally gorge ourselves to death, our warped I mean... relationship with food and weight is getting out of control, okay. and it's time to think again. Right. It's time to think again. This is literally framed like a Bond villain film, like a James Bond film of some sort, like like some sort of evil single person is behind this. There are lots of factors to why somebody might have a quote unquote different relationship with food, shall we say. A lot of it comes down to addictions, such as sugar addictions, fat addictions, those sorts of things. And also we're just right now uncovering this huge area of genetics known as epigenetics, which will influence how your body reacts to food. And I don't just mean like how the body reacts to food. I mean like how the messenger system in your body can tell you to overeat to survive. Because potentially 100 years ago, 150 years ago, your grandma or her mother may have been malnourished. And epigenetics is the study of why this can actually span generations. Wild, isn't it? My goodness. This is the man who'll be making us get this real the with man. our weight. Ooh. Dr. Christian Jessen will be fattening up the super skinny. Oh, I can't eat anymore. Shrinking the super sized. That's not lunch. Well, I've just had. And forcing them to confront the damage their diets are doing. Oh. We've got to get on top of this Okay, okay, it's is... like shock tactics, shock conversion therapy. I think we've noticed from the Fat Families episode that I don't, I want to say it doesn't work. I don't feel like shocking people into changing their ways often works. I'm not a doctor and I'm definitely not a psychologist, but when I started my journey, I don't think being shocked into changing my ways would have really changed my ways. I needed to be like gently encouraged and reassured that what I was doing was right for me. You are a ticking time bomb. Oh my God, here we go. Right, super size. Oh my God, not breasts. Am I gonna have to uh, blur everything? How could they just put like nudity boobies everywhere? I don't want nudity boobies everywhere. So unfortunately, I don't think I'm gonna be able to put in any of the intro titles here because it was just basically naked bodies the whole time. But it was done in that way that was like, oh, the only reference I've got to this is like Super Mario World when you try to line up the individual pictures. <laughs> But it's just like pictures of bodies being super size or super skinny. That's that's how I'm gonna describe that to you, my loves. Unsure how I feel about all that. Each week, we're putting a seriously underweight person into this feeding clinic, where they will take- Oh my gosh, a very changing room's design. That's gonna Sorry. drive me mad. <laughs> to this feeding clinic, where they will take part in an extreme diet swap. I don't like the word extreme. With a healthy eating plan, 
Then, three months later, they'll return for a final weigh in. Okay. But the most extreme element in this unique experiment is they'll be joined in the clinic by an oversized opposite. Super size and super skinny will encourage each other to abandon their dangerous eating habits. Do you think they will? Do you think they will encourage each other to abandon their terrible eating habits? No. Do you think that will happen? This isn't really taking into account like socioeconomic factors. Maybe there's mental health factors behind this as well. Like perfectly fine, happy, able people aren't usually the type of person that develops an addiction, which usually means that other factors have to be taken into account for things like this. So a happy-go-lucky woman on the game does not necessarily become addicted to under-eating or over-eating. Navigating them both through the swap is Dr. Christian Jessen. Okay. This is going to be a shock to the system, but I want them to help each other realise that their diets are just too extreme and there's a much healthier middle ground. But is that ethical? Is it ethical to shock the system? Is it ethical? The fussiest of fatty dieters, Yasmin Smith, is a super skinny whose dangerously restricted eating habits have turned her into a bag of bones. Let's not do all the insult nonsense, please. Like, calling someone a bag of bones, is that ever, ever going to be like, Oh, do you know what? Yeah, that'll make me really want to have a happy, healthy diet. Yeah, salad. They really make me laugh. Deranged. Again, I understand that this is like television land, and in television land, you have to make things dramatic in order to get ratings. But at the end of the day, what we are doing here is broadcast casting a health condition. And should health conditions be used for TV ratings? Question of the day, my love, question. I just feel like I look too thin. I look in the mirror and I just, I just see bones. You'd get an obese person wearing jumpers and jackets to cover, you know, the obesity up. I do the same, but to cover, you know, my thinness up. So now it's time to work out the size of Yasmin's problem. Okay, climb up on the scale. Pumps, let's see British exactly TV, what pump, pump, pump. Today. Okay, this is a bit humiliating. 109. That's just seven stone, 11 pounds. Goodness. Nearly a stone and a half under what she should be. I mean, your weight to height will give you a BMI of about 17. Yeah. Okay, which is really quite underweight. I mean, I. Okay, so back in 2008, most healthcare I would say was quite BMI heavy. BMI was originally invented to measure like groups of people, not an individual. It was about populations in terms of their relationships with weight. I can't remember the last time that I was weighed in a medical environment and they gave me a BMI reading? Unsure. Unsure about that. Ideally, I'd like you between 20, 25, something like that. Okay. So you've got like a little way to go. 20, 25 is a huge rate. Since Yasmin well. was diagnosed with a lactose intolerance two years ago, okay. she's got so fussy about what she eats, nearly every type of food has been off the menu. Okay, so here there is something actually going on. The idea of calling someone who's lactose intolerant fussy is obscene. Utterly obscene. That's obscene. Like, I've got some food intolerances. That doesn't make me fussy. That just means like, oh, I just, I want to actually pay attention to my health, you know? Oh, we're not, no, we're not doing that. We're not calling food intolerances fussy. This woman who's narrating sounds identical to the woman who voices Pod in Snog Marry Avoid. Nobody wanted to marry you. She might not be though. I don't know. I have to do some research later. Um, I've been on a lactose free, wheat free, preservative free, additive free, everything free. Is that Pod? Diet now? for the last years. As well as dairy foods like milk, cheese and yogurt, anything with wheat in it like bread and pasta is a complete no-no. Right. She also won't touch anything processed or packaged. Unfortunately, I do think there is a myth around the word processed. All foods technically have gone through a process to get into your kitchen. They just have. Unless you have grown them in the ground by yourself and then poured your own like nutrition on them and then harvested them. Technically, even harvesting a fruit is in some way processing that fruit. But pouring it into a smoothie maker and then drinking a smoothie is technically processing it. Science! You're making a lot of noise with that little chew toy. Are you enjoying that? Is that nice? I like the base. I like the buttery biscuit base. Which just leaves her to fill up on fruit and salad. End okay. result, she's completely undernourished. Now I just feel like I'm running on empty, like a car. Oh dear. Yasmin's diet is so extreme that her family and friends are starting to become concerned. With my son, when we're messing around or just playing rough, everyone's quite scared of me being snapped or hurt. Yeah. It's very, very, very bony. 
We still don't have any fat on there. Oh my goodness. He needs to eat. This child will be like, if this came out in like, let's say 2008, this child will be like, 20? 20 by now? Oh my God. <gasps> Children. Yasmin's going to need big help. And here it comes, in the form of a major shock tactic. Right, okay. Well, Derbyshire this... diet dodger Daryl Watson has... Did he need, did he need a little bit of alliteration there? What was that? Derby diet dodger? Derbyshire diet dodger Daryl Watson has got just five days to get her to fall in love with food again. This is what's so bizarre about shows like this, is that even in Fat Families, we saw this happen, where the host would be really nice to the people in the room with them, and then afterwards, in the narration part, just absolutely scathing, this narrator is being really quite hateful. Obviously, they've probably had a script written for them to say all this, but it is just like, you're just talking about these people without them actually being present? That's so hateful. And by living off Yasmin's restricted diet for a few days, right, Daryl so can start gaining control of diets. his own weight problem. Okay. Daryl has a diet with one golden rule. Oh, Basically, if I want something, I'll have it. And he sticks to it, whether it be enormous breakfasts, lunches and dinners, all washed down with can after can of Diet Coke, or the sack loads of snack foods he demolishes in the hours in between. Oh, it seems These to be all very sugar and processed fat, doesn't when it? it comes to dangerously extreme eating. See, unfortunately, I do actually truly believe that, like, supermarkets and food manufacturers are to blame for these endemic issues that our society is facing because they literally go out of their way to make everything that we eat, like, the most exciting, over-the-top, like, sensory overload, like, nonsense. You know what I mean? And then it becomes a case of like, oh, it's not just willpower about not buying that. It's also like you're fighting this addictive quality that your brain is like, I know what that tastes like and what it feels like to eat that and get this dopamine response. So you're also fighting like a physical addiction and it becomes so difficult. Like losing weight, diet and exercise, etc. for myself has been a learning process about how I react to the world around me as well. It's like, I know that I'm not going to be able to be like, oh my God, a whole cake. I'm going to cream. But I also know that like, I really like cake and I want to eat a little bit of cake and I shouldn't have to be in this position of like, oh my God, I'm the worst person ever because I'm a dirty diet dodger by having a piece of cake. I sort of hate the phrase, everything in moderation. I'm like, no, everything in consideration. I need to be considerate at all times and vigilant about what what is going on in my life. And the results are showing. At right. 66 inches, Daryl's waist is almost three times The wide. size of that measuring tape. Is that necessary? That's TV drama, isn't it? Very theater, very pantomime. Wider than Yasmin's tiny 24 inches. By swapping Lots diets, they words. will shock each other into confronting their eating issues and changing their dangerous habits. Lots of body shots that are really close up, but they're also using a wide angle lens, like a vague fisheye style lens, to make things look more dramatic than they are. I feel about your weight now. I find it hard to do what I was doing before. You know, you know, just standing up and, and getting around is a lot harder than it used to be. You find it tiring? Well, lumping 33 stone, that's not an easy job. Lugging around only a fraction of that weight. I do want to say, when I was at my heaviest, I had to move house and it was such a struggle day. And my like body was just so exhausted at the end of it. And now having spent time in the gym, building up my personal strength and also paying attention to what goes in my body as fuel, the last time that I actually moved house, although it was stressful and tiring, I didn't have to like rest for days and days and days afterwards. And I'm always surprised about that because it's one of these things that creeps up on you and you never really realize what's happening. And I don't feel like that aspect is really talked about. It, we're always, we always see these shows and they're very like, you are the problem, you, 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 it's all you, you, awful, awful woman, awful. And it's like, okay, shall we have some empathy about how people can make choices to increase their quality of life. Should we talk about that perhaps? No. Super skinny Yasmin can't understand why people let themselves pile on the pounds. If I saw somebody that was really Sometimes obese, I'd think, God, do you know what you're doing to yourself? Do you know what you're putting in your body? Do you know the poisons and the artificial rubbish that's in your body? 
it's time for Yasmin to come face to face with her fears. The thing is, even when I was at my biggest, I knew I was eating unhealthy. Like, you know what's happening, but sometimes you just haven't hit that point or you're somehow powerless or you just feel like, like something doesn't click at that moment. And then when it does click, it feels like, okay, you can make pigeon steps towards progress now, whatever that progress looks like for you. Yasmin. Right. Okay. Daryl. Hi. Come and meet each other. This is... Daryl weighs 33 stone. This is a... Yeah. Daryl, this is Yasmin. Okay. She weighs seven and a half stone. Right. This means that we could fit four of her into you. Daryl, have a feel of Yasmin's arm. Right. Yeah. Tell me what you think. Bone. Bone? Yeah. Any Very flesh? Thin. Not a lot. What about this? Look at all this. It's quite hairy, isn't it? Yeah. And this is really common that in underweight people, they often grow extra hair because they have such low metabolisms. They're cold and our hands are really cold. Almost extra layer of body shaming there. Like, oh, isn't she hairy? To oh, demonstrate dear, precisely what they'll be Britney eating, Spears Christian's going to show them both what their week's worth of food looks like. Oh, okay. I remember now. I remember so. Some of you guys may have seen this is a little cutaway meme joke that has been used occasionally, made particularly femoise by the Novimpia Chanel. Tiramisu. Tiramisu. This part is the kind of food aversion, grossing out therapy part. I remember this bit quite well. Um, prepare yourselves, my loves. It's not gonna be pleasant, no. It's not that gross really, but it is kind of like, if you're funny with food, it can be a little bit gross. Starting with Yasmin's breakfast. Right. Rice cakes, fruit, strawberries, nothing wrong with that. Right. Lunch, let's have a look. What's that? Salmon. Kebabby, meaty things, yeah. some yeah. chicken eggs, chicken. some avocados. This is all good, healthy stuff. I can't complain. What's this coming through? Smoothies. Smoothies. And then we go to dinner, yeah? What's this? Chicken, I think. Chicken, chicken breasts? Yeah. What just. Honestly, the thing is, very similar to Fat Families when he blended that thing up and made her sniff it in the cupboard. What an odd sentence to say. Any healthy food that you're like, you'd be like, look at this lovely salad. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Like if you mash it up and make it look disgusting, everyone's gonna be like, oh, oh. it's genetically inbuilt into us so that we're not eating rotten food. Rice pasta. What's that? More meat? Uh, steak, probably. Steaks, yep. some carrots. Yeah. They made it out in the earlier part of this show, like this lady literally only eats lettuce. They didn't mention that she has like protein sources, that she has carbohydrate sources, that she has nutritional sources. She maybe just needs to increase the volume slightly, which is a different kettle of babies entirely. What did you just say? Bananas. Oh, this yes, is dessert, yes. is it slop, slop, slop to my goo. What else have we got? Oh, did That's we need that? What's the first thing that you would say there? Is this a day's worth of food? Not much. It's not a lot, is it? An average woman should be eating around 2,000 calories a day, but Yasmin's only getting through around 1,300. She's missing out on around two and a half days of food each week. So do you remember the swan? They put them on 1200 calorie diet days, didn't they? Awful. I must actually say though, that your calorific intake, depending on who you are, will fluctuate throughout life. When we say numbers like 2000 calories a day, that's based on like the most average person ever being average throughout their average daily life, averagely. Who actually here watching this, or me included, is actually an average person. The average person does not exist. They're a measurement of a population of people divided by how many people are in that population. It is not a physical, real human being, which is why I always think diet, diet and exercise, calorific intake, blah, -de blah, -de blah, should always be a personalized experience. But that's not very capitalism friendly, is it? No, we just want to package you one thing and say, there you go, that's what you do. Buy all of our products only. Diamonds! Supersizing her diet with Daryl's fat-filled meals will put a stop Who to that is for the time narrator? being. So, Daryl, so an average week for you, Oh, was that this a week's worth eat. of food? Oh, that, that did look quite little, didn't it? Okay, are you ready? Because they're really going to go out of their way here to make us feel quite unwell. A tire. Oh, sandwiches here that you sandwiches. have. Cheese, ham. Oh, the pink oh, sauce. Oh, well. toasties. This, this is what you'd have toasties. snacking mid-morning time, okay? Right. 
crisps, fried food, saturated fat. We move on to lunch. More sandwiches, burgers, what's that, a roast chicken, pizzas. Oh, they really went out of their way to make this quite vile, didn't they? The Dyson's gone too far. The fat, okay. A typical man. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, no. Man should be putting away two and a half thousand calories a day, but Daryl's consuming 6,200. Okay. That's an over. That is what my first ex boyfriend was consuming, and he was a professional bodybuilder. Hmm. Read of a staggering 10 days worth of food every week. That's quite a strong addiction, isn't it? So far, this show is very much trying to sound like it's individual responsibility and not collective effort. Which, the thing is, like, I'm not, I'm not utterly deranged. I can say that, like, it is your choice of what you put in your body. A hundred percent, it is your choice. But there are factors that influence that choice that it's, sometimes it's just difficult. Like, how many of us have been sloshy drunk and been like, Oh, get a kebab and chips on the way home, girls. How many of us have done that? easily over a typical day's worth of calories in that meal alone. And that can easily derail your diet. And then of course you can easily say to that, well, don't get to yourself to that much of a point when you're drunk that you eat that much. And I'm just saying like, there are so many other factors that sometimes come into why people overeat or why people undereat. And just telling them you are naughty for doing that is not really dealing with the root cause. Overeating is a symptom of something else. It's not often the, the definitive cause of something. Uh, right, what go. is that? It's a bit- Oh, here she is. Do you remember this woman? This is Dr. Gillian McKeith. Dr. Gillian McKeith. There is actually a lot of scandal around this woman because she claims to be a doctor, but she is not a medical doctor. She has a PhD from a closed university that she studied long distance from, which has been viewed as a pseudoscience. And pseudoscience means that there is no evidence to suggest that that science is real or accurate. We're gonna leave it there. But she had a huge career at this point in like time in the UK. In fact, actually she was a staunch like vegan activist as well. And I, I was vegan for a long time throughout my life. And for six years, from 16 years old, I was vegan. And she had this really delicious, like, Rice Krispie chocolate bar available in Boots that was completely vegan. It was my favourite treat ever. Not available now. Very upset about that. Gillian McKeith. I'm going to die. Hey, bum! She was like, We're a nation of big, fat bums. The biggest in Europe, in fact. So I'm on a campaign to slim them down. You How funny that now, like, having a big bum is, say? like, sexy. I'm here to help you. Oh, no, we're not that. Taking that ass is insane. I'm traveling the length and breadth of Britain yeah. to see how big bums really are. Why? So I'm here to burn big bums and get some of the biggest culprits to try out some of the methods that claim to reduce your rears. Imagine this. That is your turn. We're gonna ban big, what, we're just gonna ban a body part? Like, grow up, Gillian. Awful woman. Let's see, let's take a look. Not much turn in there, is there? It's a 54 inch bottom. Well, I think it could do with being just a bit less. Our nationwide survey has revealed the average British backside measures an ample 40 and a half inches. I think mine is even bigger than that. <laughs> So I have in fact just measured my uh, bum size and I am 41 inches and it is a combination of muscle and fat. I have not had a BBL, I have not had any implants, I have not had any enhancements or anything to my bum. The idea that she's somehow saying that like a part of my body needs to be banned is ludicrous. What an unhealthy way to phrase like wanting people to maybe make slightly more educated quality of life choices by saying ban big bums, get over it, move on. Oh, she was awful, wasn't she? Just shock TV, very Trini and Susanna, very Katie Hopkins, just awful. So it's time to get to work. Right. Get to, you better get to work, to bitch, York work diva. Part of the Coventry, my countrywide crusade has drummed up over 100 big bummed recruits. Time to inspect the troops. I'm so, like, so she is obsessed with bums. She's also deeply obsessed with poo as well. She is absolutely a poo queen. Oh my God. She had her own show at one point where she used to get people to like poo in Tupperware and then she would like fish around in it and inspect the poo. I'm going to poo. Not a medical doctor, let's remember. I did see a comparison once on Twitter between her and Nigella Lawson because they are the same age. And someone was like, look what being a poo queen looks like and look what being a chef looks like. <laughs>
Reserve your own judgment. Ladies, ladies, ladies! You've all got big bums and I'm having a crack down on them. Turn around and let's see if we can tame those bums! Oh dear. Oh, I'm oh, no. being fallopian tubes. I'm not so sure we can. Tonight, I'm tackling the Lady Godivers of Coventry. Though looking at these ladies, they'd need a- Imagine, imagine, imagine being invited on a TV show and they're like, what we need you to do is get into your underwear and just shake your bum at the camera so you can be ridiculed on national TV. I don't want that. This was back in the day where like getting on TV was still considered like, oh my God, I'm gonna be on TV later. Everyone look, friends, family, office workers, look, I'm, I'm on TV, yeah, me. What is I've heard situation? there is a big problem in Coventry. What is this woman doing? Planet-sized posteriors with moon craters. Before giving them their mission of testing a touche toning technique, I need to take down their particulars. It's a 45 inch bum. At an average of 42 inches, this lot are one and a half inches above the national average at a total of 417. They're just about the same size as a dump truck. Give it a press and tell me if it's toned. I'm sorry, but actually like, at the moment we're in the zeitgeist of like, a big bum is beautiful. So gosh, just what? <laughs> This is so what we are watching here is like a king queen just indulge her fetishes. It's very the creators of that poop toy. Like, why did you do this? Gonna get loopy on my poopy. Why did you make this if you didn't have a deep fascination with it? Why? Hmm? Why? Super skinny Yasmin is eating less than a third of what she should be and weighs in at just seven stone 11. With her body this screaming out for more food, like she Joanna has checked herself well. into our feeding clinic. She hopes that by chowing down on supersized right, so Daryl's high calorie where they snacks and meals, diet. she'll start piling on the pounds. Right. Piling on the wig. I, I was gonna say, I love these small hairs on you. I really think you should like, wear them more often. Day one of the diet swap. Right. And breakfast time nice brings Yasmin's wig. first big food challenge. Daryl's usual challenge. fatty fry up. Oh, do you know, there is, I'm, I'm, I, I cannot bear baked beans. I cannot stand the sight of them. Awful, awful food. <laughs> Oh, don't get me started on beans. I'm going to poo. You'll be all right. <laughs> right. Here we go. Great English breakfast. Oh my God. It is great, actually, minus that and that. It's fine. Snackaholic <laughs> Daryl will have to survive the whole morning on four rice cakes. Okay. Is this not just going to be right. inflicting go. pain? Uh, it's not going to catch on in the morning. Like, how can you force a small person? to eat way much more food volume than they usually would. How could, like, how is that ethical? Um. <laughs> but it's Yasmin who's really struggling. Daryl's favorite fried black pudding is really making her stomach turn. I could not have. It's not the taste, it's the idea of what's in my mouth. <laughs> black pudding, yeah, like I'm not one for black, black pudding. pudding. It's Lads. Immediately <laughs> upset stomach, yeah. And lunch isn't any easier for Yasmin, here. whether it be the wheat and additive rich contents of a pot noodle or the greasy peanut butter salad. Yeah, yeah, if you've cut out wheat for like ages in your diet, can you just suddenly eat loads of wheat again? Or do you have to like be weaned back into it? Which Daryl always has with it. It's quite a change from her normal midday meal of a fruit smoothie. Go for it. You've not got a nut allergy, have you? I love peanuts, bro. Well, I don't think I can Why did he all... say that in such a... Almost with a, a tinge of disdain in his voice? Did you hear that? You haven't got a nut allergy, have you? I don't know. I'm not sure about that. I mean, my stomach's not that size. Yeah. All of the, you know, the potty doodle and the amount of everything together with the sandwiches and the crisps, I was quite shocked by because I've never, you know, known anyone that could eat all of that together other than now. Daryl, obviously. That's not lunch. What I've just had, it's just fruit. Sort of pureed. That's like a, a small snack sort of thing. Up until now. Oh, okay. Should we talk about something here, my lovelies? There is an aspect of addiction that lends itself to delusion. Anyone who struggled with an addiction to anything will understand this, especially if you've taken steps towards a recovery of some sort. I fully know, fully know, I was deluded when I was eating way too much and thinking, I just eat really healthy. Why am I putting on all this? Why, why am I this? That? I don't eat anywhere near it. Like, 
delusion, delusion, delusion. Also, when I developed an addiction to a specific naughty substance that I do not recommend, my brain was like, oh no, this is fine. This is absolutely fine. Yeah, no, you're just one of those people that needs that little bit extra. Like, no, that is delusion. But you also have to tackle the root cause of a delusion because quite often delusion is the symptom of something else, just like the overeating or the undereating. It's a symptom of something else, whether that's insecurities, mental health, dietary needs, like there's something else going on there that's almost informing that language of fruit's not a meal, it's just a snack. Like, mm, well, anything you technically eat is a meal, like snack is just a buzzword that advertisers have come up with that makes you feel like you're not eating too much because like, oh, it's just a snack, it's just a snack. It's fine, it's just, it's not real food, it's just a snack. No, Mary, that's a meal. Small snacks haven't featured in Daryl's vocabulary. Right, okay. He struggled with his weight since childhood, but in the last 10 years, My goodness. his overeating has got worse. Since childhood, then there's obviously something else that's inf that's caused this, right? When I met my wife, I was around 18, 18 and a half stone. And I don't know, through contentment and being happy or whatever, start to put it on. Daryl's attempts to lose weight and exercise have provoked comments that are hard for wife Tracy to stomach. We went swimming and there was um, another floor above us with glass and people were pointing at him and you could see a lip read. How on earth can somebody get into that state? Daryl didn't see, so I didn't say anything, but that hurt me. Come dinner time, That's it's so Daryl who's disappointed. Well, he's cooking up. It's so easy for people to fall into this trap of, well, that's your fault, isn't it? It's your fault. And I feel like sometimes that's also like cultural basis. It's very easy to be insultive towards people without actually considering why things are the way they are. Yasmin, his favorite dinner, roast chicken and all the trimmings. She's I prepared love a roast low potato. fat chicken and avocado salad. And that's tempting, but... <laughs> Daryl's never eaten avocado before, and it's not exactly love at first bite. Oh. I'm not keen on that. What, the avocado? Does that my stomach as well, really? so. Is it because it's squishy, the texture? Yeah, it's, well, I don't know. Taste it... of it as well. If you're trying to lose weight, you might think avocados are a complete no-no. But in fact, they're the original superfood. They've got more fibre. I hate the buzzword superfood. All food used to be superfood before ultra processing came in and just made everything look nice without having any nutritional value. ...than any other fruit, and they're full of healthy monounsaturated fats, oh. which help protect against heart disease. They they're also loaded with antioxidants to keep the immune system healthy. Antioxidants are, however, an amazing Yasmin's thing. Yasmin's also need struggling more with her roast dinner. Getting rid of those free radicals, girl. O3, Definitely get out. having an effect, um, the... Are they those? What's that? That kind of reminds me of that dish that went viral on TikTok that was just like spicy rocks. I think it was a street food, spicy rocks. Definitely, definitely having an effect, um, the stuffing with the wheat in it, because I can kind of feel my stomach bubbling and I'm beginning to feel a bit sicky. <laughs> oh no. And the more she tries to yes. eat, the worse it gets. You look at my hands, I'm actually shaking. But I was fine until like a couple of minutes ago. Oh, this isn't, I don't like this. I just feel really sick. Because I haven't felt like this for a long time. This is how I was feeling when I used to eat all of this. Oh, I don't like this. Please don't a doctor come in and Reactions say, oh, she's making it up. What caused Yasmin to give up most types of food? Right. I worked out that when I eliminated wheat, I stopped feeling so bloated. When I eliminated um, dairy and various other things, um, fast food, preservatives, I stopped getting migraines, I stopped feeling um, sick in the mornings all the time. OK. Um, and so I just kind of continued with it. Unfortunately, if you don't have those foods, you lose lots of weight. But apart from her lactose intolerance, doctors have found no evidence of any of the other intolerances Yasmin claims to suffer from. So, now what we're gonna hear in this show, I think, is a little bit of like, well, she's just crazy, isn't she? She's making up her own problems. Now, I am in no way, shape or form qualified to diagnose anyone with anything, ever. I'm just gonna put that out there. What I will say, however, is medicine 
it has not stopped developing. Medicine has not stopped. Science has not stopped. We are learning new ways every single day of understanding data that's been presented to us or understanding observations that we see. Within saying that, I'm not saying that some people do feel the need to either exaggerate or make something up, should we say? Make something up in order to fit their world narrative. We see this all the time with people willfully experiencing cognitive dissonance with politics. Of course it can be applied with any other aspect of life, I think with something like this, it just needs to be approached in such a sensitive, sensible way that I do not think we can get on a TV show where someone is like, bag of bones, bitch, dodgy diet dodger. Like, I just don't think that this is the place for it. Do you understand? Do you see where I'm coming from? Please. She's had a lot of tests over the, over the years and a lot of them have come back negative. I feel that doing this program is, is part of her own program to resolve the issue she's got. Um, whether they be real, is in, in the sense of medical, or real in the sense of psychological or, or emotional. Both are, both are still real. Like Just because you have a psychological issue does not mean it cannot manifest symptoms in your body. Behind Yasmin's restricted diet, right, go. Dr. Jessen's concerned she's ignoring the long-term health implications. God, are you ready for some A1 sized yes, shame? Come with me. Because I want you to have a look at something. In the art gallery, shame. Shame. Who this? Um, yeah. Who is it? <laughs> Me. Yeah? What do you think? Well, that one especially is horrible. I hate my hands as it is, so it's Why? horrible. Well, they look like skeletal. Being underweight means you have less fat, which is an important insulator in the body and yes. helps to keep you warm. With tea. Therefore, like many skinny people, Yasmin feels the cold. Now, this is the thing that you always point out as being <laughs> the thing you really don't like about yourself, isn't yeah. it? Tell me about it. I used to have a nice bum and it's gone. <laughs> it is flat, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. And your body has essentially eaten itself to get nutrients. Yeah. Your bum has disappeared. Starving yourself of food results in your body eating into the muscles for energy, mm. leaving you weak, tired and achy. I mean, I mean, picture, I mean me. they're not lying. They're not like in any way, shape or form spreading misinformation with this. They're just presenting the information in such a shock tactic way that makes you go like, oh, why would that woman let her eat herself? Again, I'm gonna take it back to the point of like happy, well-adjusted, like content people don't often develop problems that can then lead into addictions, whether that's like under-eating, over-eating, all the sort. Those are symptoms of something else going on. So being like, ah, blah, 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 doesn't actually solve the problem at all. It reminds me of what you see on the news when you see, you know, the children and, you know, in Ethiopia. Not, the we're not talking and about stuff, children in need. You see all their ribs sticking out of their stomachs. That. And that's what it reminds me of. And they're starving. I, there's there's, there's had... no, the muscles between. Has she had implants, maybe? And your ribs are going. And there's yet more bad news. Oh, Being God. undernourished can lead to a lowered libido and damage your overall reproductive health. That's actually Also, what I want you to remember is you're a woman. Yeah. But women are supposed to have a layer of fat. Yeah. You're supposed to have babies. And the other point about losing all sorts of weight is you become infertile. You stop having periods. You don't have enough energy in your body to yeah. sustain a baby growing He's inside you. A it's bit worrying, isn't it? Yeah. There. Oh, stop playing. The amount of copyright music that we've heard throughout just like 18 minutes of this episode so far. Ridiculous. Now that Yasmin's aware of the potential consequences right. of being underweight, it's there. time for her there. to get back on track the with the diet swap. Is playing when it comes to play. snacking, though, both she and Daryl are in unfamiliar territory. Right. I gather these are uh, uh, raisins? Mm. Oh, d d absolutely not. Do we all them? Raisins. I eat about half of that, the most awful. Yasmin's got to crunch her way through Daryl's less healthy and rather too generously sized portions of snacks. Oh dear. So what other things do you snack on during the day? Wigs. More fruits. Tea. <laughs> Fresh fruit. Tea and like wigs. Deep, ready salted tea. crisps. Probably just the one packet. Yeah, I'd just have the one packet. I wouldn't. I'd have the one multi-pack. Multi-pack? I can't imagine sitting there for hours watching telly, eating rubbishy, stodgy crisps. Oh, I couldn't do. Not nice. The thing is, even like watching screens has a way of overwriting a part of your brain that's saying that I'm satiated when I've eaten whatever it is that's in front of me. There's been some science into this. I don't know the exact study, but there's something about like the way that screens influence the brain waves to like not quite pay attention to what's happening around you. And that can easily lead to something like overeating. Again, a symptom of something else happening. I'm back body, on the campaign trail oil. to get all of you to reduce your rears. Right, and today I've made it to Coventry. The lion! Bang, bang, bang.
No, we're not banning anything. We're banning you, Julia McKee. We're banning hateful shoes. Cross-dressing shoes. Reducing methods. Right, go. Brought you here because I want your bums looking less like blancmange and more like buns of steel. How what do you rude. think is if in here? If you said here? my bum looked like blancmange into the bin. Oh, I didn't realise I could angle my microphone. Ah, oh, you're suddenly going to get me lots of louds. Uh, she's a professional. Oh, no. Cream. <laughs> Cream. We're obviously in a gym. But Giggly ladies in the gym. That I don't think any of you have ever tried. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. Do you see that? Look, knocked out. <laughs> I think all the ovums have become activated in this room. Leslie, ladies, he is your personal trainer for the right. next four weeks. Right. And this guy means serious business. Right. Just for the game, just grab a ball, get against the wall. Now, let's move it. Yeah. The irresistible combination of trainer Wesley and a series of Wesley. specially designed ass-busting exercises will right. hopefully get these Midlands maidens into shape. Midlands maidens. Okay? What is that? Transvestite of the bride. Pretend that someone's going to grab your bum. I want you to squeeze towards me. Okay, start clenching those bums. Bum clenches work by oh, continually very tensing British and flexing TV. the glutus maximus. Any time that British TV, there's like a prize or there's like a bit of cheeky tongue in naughty, naughty, don't say that naughty. There's always an audience noise that's like, ooh, woo! Used to happen on the National Lottery all the time. That's the bum muscles to you and me. What, glutes, they increase yes. muscle mass and therefore make your butt tighter. He said he's going to fill your bums, Lord. Excellent. A tight bum means something quite different in Queerland. Well, come on, Teletubby. Teleport us to Mars. <laughs> Bussy. <laughs> Oh, uh, you gotta have fun and you gotta love, otherwise just cry all day long, every day. Isn't the world awful? I hateful. Oh, Jilly McKeith. At least 30 to 50 of them. They're gonna have to work very hard. Is this an invitation for you to just up. touch bums? <laughs> mm. Next exercise we're gonna do is called the squat. The squats Ooh. work the whole squat lower that body, tightening the butt and the legs. Is it? Maintain your stance for the specified time and feel those thigh and bum muscles Ten, burn. Nine, eight. Where's the hurting girls? Six, is this, okay, I guess this is a wall squat. It seems to me, ladies, you're more than your bones. Up. At this rate, these oh, she's girls... She's just so unlikable, isn't she? She's like an angry auntie that just hated you since the day you were born. Girls are going to be hard pushed to top the National League when it comes I'm to I'm going to give you some tough inches. love, which is just knocking you down so and telling promising. you how much I hate now, you. They're looking a bit miserable. They've got to do the work to get those bums in shape. I think it's going to be a struggle for these ladies. I think that hairstyle is a struggle for you, Gillian. Right, well, goodbye, Gillian. Hello to this wig. Right, here we go. Super again. skinny, fussy, food phobic Yasmin and 33 stone grub guzzler Daryl are swapping their dodgy diet. Not grub guzzler. Bukaki. We're not doing that. In order to snap them out of their unhealthy eating habits. Right. Okay. And has it worked, or is it just causing more it's trauma? Time for breakfast. Oh, Daryl has sorry. rustled up a toasted ham sandwich for Yasmin, while well, she's prepared him melon with Parma ham. Oh, and he continental can't stand woman it. on the go. That's horrible. Oh dear. If you don't want a porky paunch, Parma ham is a good choice of cold cuts. Its wafer thin slices and intense flavour means a little goes a long way. Oh. It's preservative free and high in protein. Oh. No wonder the Italians have such long lifespans. Oh, yes, well, maybe. It's because all British food is just like beige with some beige goo on it. Beige. But to finish every last mouthful. Right. No, not for you. Well done. And I know I don't like Parma ham, but I was determined to eat it because then she's got no excuse not to eat what's put in front of her. Well, she does. It's dinner time. Her stomach might not be able to expand to consume this after years of not eating that volume of food. The absolute limit. See, this is where I'm a little bit like, mm, the ethics of this show are being pulled into question in my mind because it almost feels like there's viciousness in here. There's like, well, she has to eat it, eat it all. Like, we don't need to see that. You shouldn't be concerned about what someone else is eating. You should be like, I am here to hopefully make better quality of life decisions for myself. Under this insane concept of a reality TV show, we've seen a little bit of vitriol so far from both sides where the lady has said, 
I just don't understand how someone can eat this much. Like, how can you just sit there and just watch TV and eat? And he's just been there. Well, she's got no excuse now to not eat that much. Like, is this, this isn't helpful. Is this constructive or is this like competition pitting against each other vibes? Like, this isn't drag race. They're not winning money and a career. It's like, this is meant to be a health show. With a pizza combo that's guaranteed to get her stomach somersaulting. And can I ask, I know the prawns and I know that's chicken, I think. What's that? Cockles. Cockles? <laughs> do they come out in little shells or...? Like, they do, don't they? They come out of a jar for me. Oh, I don't... I don't have cockles. No. I have developed my diet to a place where I will call myself pescatarian now. I have been vegetarian for years. Something has happened to me since the pandemic. I don't know what it is, but my body just does not react to food in the same way that it used to. And I'm having to include a lot more like seafood in my diet in order to actually hit my macros. So I'm comfortably calling myself pescatarian now, but cockles, no thank you. Jelly deals, no. I definitely am not gonna eat all of this. How much do you think so you're gonna eat of it? I'll keep going till- I couldn't, like, I, I don't like... think most people could eat a whole pizza in one go, could they? Personally, I don't think I could eat a whole pizza in one go. If I'm gonna get like a pizza as a takeaway, I'm, I'm buying the large, but I'm saving half of it and maybe eating it a bit later or the next morning or something. I'm gonna throw up. <laughs> I'll go and get the bucket. La, 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 la. <laughs> no, I'm not into this. I can't eat anymore. No. With her stomach gone all Vesuvius, the pizza's proving too much for Yasmin. Vesuvius. If she's going to overcome her fear of food, she's got to find it in herself to soldier on. But how is this helping? How... Are... I don't think she has a fear of food. This, this like conversation that's happening that she's somehow like made up these allergies or these intolerances and it's becoming like a fussy food phobia. I don't understand, like clearly something is going on that needs to be spoken about that's just com being completely glossed over. And you can do it. Despite the fact it's wheat-based and covered in seafood, Yasmin's determined to finally conquer her food phobias. Oh dear. One mouthful at a time. Oh dear. I think me eating the ham this morning, you know, sort of spurred her on a bit more. Because I don't think she'd have had half of what she did tonight if I hadn't done that. Would you say that's real? I don't know if that would... I don't know if that's technically true. Not only am I attempting to reduce the size of the nation's rears, I'm also on a quest to oh, see right. the Oh right, here she goes, Gillian McKeith at the market, talking about bums. Here at St Albans Market, the right. stallholders have countless lunch options to choose from. Right. But are they picking the right ones? Of course not, because you don't go to a fast food place to be like, oh, the salad. Three versions of the classic working lunch. Lift that lid. Two ham rolls. Cornish pasty and lift that lid. Char grilled chicken with bacon pasta salad. The question is, which one will the market traders and their customers think is the most calorific? Oh, the most calorific. Oh, with my um, bare chested beef cakes. I want to test if the these most guys calorific, know probably the middle one, probably the Cornish pasty. When they're having their midday meal on the run. Right, what do Your we think? Your job is to guess. Quiz time, everybody. The oh, we, we don't often play a game here on the Chanel, my loves. Okay, game. Is it the pasty? Is it the pasty? Day. I am shocked and disgusted that this is happening. Comment pasty down below. Calories. The highest. I don't think you'll have any trouble. <laughs> so which the cheek is the highest in calories? Cornish pasty. Yes. How many calories do you think it has? Uh, about a thousand. Thousand. Yeah. Or uh, mm, probably about six hundred. How much has it got? Ham rolls? About 250, I think. And oh, more than the that. The char grilled chicken with the bacon pasta salad? Maybe oh. 200 calories. 200 calories for this one over here. No, oh, so it could be the salad for? actually, couldn't it? Because mayonnaise. I've had the Cornish pasty. It would have to be the pasty. You'd have the Cornish pasty, yeah. even although you think yes. it's the highest in calories. Yes. No, now I'm thinking it's the pasta. Oh! Well, then, 66 out of 100 marketeers thought that the Cornish pasty was the highest in calories. Were they right? Wig? In actual fact, they were completely wrong. Interesting. The chicken pasta salad is actually the most calorific at 740 calories. There you go. Calories. Okay, right, yes. Everybody's incorrect. the same incorrect. amount, you could have two chicken Kievs, five large bowls of minestrone soup, or 20 cucumbers. This 
who's gonna eat 20 cucumbers? Welcome to the No Pimpia. Is actually the highest in calories. No. Yes, no. it is. Gosh, it's actually 740 yeah, who knew? calories. Mayonnaise and pasta. Really? Wow. Yeah. Oh, oh yes. right, nipple Second shot, place, lovely. 580 calories is the Cornish Big pasty. Daddy Milkers milking pasties. They time. don't have to be quite so fattening. Right. And we've found three of the lowest calorie versions around. Right. Oh, see, I was under the impression that it was like a bought pasty, as in like bought from one of the fast food vendors. Then I would have assumed that that would have been the highest. Not like supermarket food. Why would you go to a food market and quiz people on supermarket food? It's because they're terrible. Back at the feeding clinic, oh, it's God. time Back for Yasmin and Daryl to reflect on what they've learned. All right, is this the end? Food. Okay. What does that right, mean? Right, guys, you're at the end of your diet swap. Okay. How did it go? Really well. I learned a lot. What did you learn? Tell me. I learned not to fear certain foods anymore, food full stop. Um, and uh, I learned that I can eat bread again. Why were you fearing food? Interesting. Just because I put all my um, worries of my intolerances from lactose all in one and combined them unnecessarily. What about you, Dara? Well, How did it go? I, do you know, I don't necessarily... I feel, feel like that maybe has kind of led her into a bit of a, an interesting place there because quite often, if you have a food intolerance, you don't just have one food intolerance. Quite often, other things can also interact with that intolerance. So... Anxiety mosquito. You know, I've learnt a lot. I mean, I've learnt that there's people at the other extreme of dieting where they eat just so little. You know, I mean, I, can, I eat a, too much, you know, and that's where I'm here and find that middle ground. What and I think all of this is a mental health consideration. To eat, you know, to personally. eat more stuff, to, to eat more yes. of the essential stuff that you've not got in your diet. What I've done for you both... What does he mean, though, the essential stuff that's not in her diet? Because we saw earlier, although her week's worth of food, it seemed relatively, like, nutrition-heavy? Just perhaps not enough of it. Oh, we have a little visitor. We have a little visitor. Mm, a little celebrity. Are you all tired from your injection? Is that what it is? Oh, is that going to be a yawn or is that a stress yawn? Because I've picked you up and I'm talking to you now. It's funny. You'll beg to come on my lap and then be like, oh, I'm actually really stressed. Let me down, mummy. And I'm like, oh, okay. Are you just being difficult today? Are you having a difficult day? You can sit on my lap. You have to sit nicely. That are essentially the same diet plans. Okay? Right. It contains okay. the same sorts of foods, just in slightly different amounts. You're going to enjoy your food and not fear it. Thank so you've got 12 weeks on these diet plans, right. and I want to see you at the end of that time looking healthier and happier you are and better weights you are. Okay? Okay. okay. Good stuff. Okay. All right. I mean, I'm a great advocate of you can still enjoy food. You just have to change your relationship with that food, however that looks like in your circumstance. If you're looking to make slightly better quality of life, choices I guess you could say it as I don't think anyone's really at fault though I think it is fault is a very interesting terminology that you won't often see me um indulging in here on the Chanel except when it comes to like production fault there's always something a bit more nefarious there Oh, bye. See you all later. Leaving that. For the, the next changing three rooms months, have the Yasmin and Daryl will have to manage their Wait, own. Wait, were they just like sleeping in the room? Interesting. And eating. But has their time in the feeding clinic done enough to change their bad diet habits? This know, week, week has been life changing. The thing I've learned the most is not to fear um, food as much as I was. You know, how I was eating before wasn't right. It was just, I've, I've what I wanted when I wanted, you know, and that's not a good way. <laughs> yeah, I'm not you know, part. though, I do have a feeling that this show is presenting it as like, oh, they've now changed and they'll be able to continue on their merry little way. I do feel like there is potentially here an imbalance of the journey that might be undertaken by both of these, um, not contestants, what are they called? Guests on the show, should we say? I feel like one person's journey in particular may be a bit longer, more rigorous, and more intense than the others. Ram again. Oh, never a cuckold. <laughs> it's been a tough gonna be week a cuckold. for both of them. What? <laughs> yeah, I'll never eat palm ram again. Oh, I'd never eat cuckold. Oh, I'd never eat cuckold. Oh, I'm not talking about cuckolding today. <laughs> it's been a tough week for both of them. Oh, it's been a long the day. The hard work has only just begun. Wow, Yasmin. Oh, oh she's got a glam on and she's got a head on. So much better. Thank you. Oh, you can't say, oh, she looks so much more gorgeous and better. Like, she's literally got glam on. Like, everyone's gonna look different. Are they also gonna put the man in a nice wig and perhaps a lash? Why don't you try on that lovely. Ah! My wig flew, mommy.
Touch of glass. Oh, you look so good. I don't think so. I think that's a little bit unfair. Thank you. Okay. I see your face is yeah. Is three months old enough to see it? Me and Yasmin's figures looking so. fuller and healthier as well, okay. as a result of following a healthy diet plan for the last three months. Oh, black lingerie. Oh, but but she has a difference. got boob you know, enhancements you. as well. You know, Tommy, you run your yeah, hips. Yeah. Boobs have definitely got bigger. I think there's a bit of a bum there now. Definitely. Let's go and weigh you. Right. Exactly. But the proof of the pudding's in the eating. So has she piled on the pounds? Hi. Why would you try and say someone is like becoming more healthy with their choices and then be like, has she piled them on? Piled on the pounds. Like, there's just no letting up, is there? Hey. You look How's great. it been going? Good, good. You look fabulous. So Yasmin's reunited with diet swap partner Daryl to share the results. Yasmin has managed to gain half a stone in just three months okay. and Six. put on four inches. Six. Oh, really? Just over four inches around your tummy, which is more than I thought you ever would. I, I didn't even think I'd put on... Four inches around your tummy and I your really, hips. really didn't know that. <laughs> oh. I don't mean to speculate here, but look at her eyes change when he says about size gain. Four inches. Have I in really? Fact, just over four inches around your tummy. Like, I, I don't think that that is a happy eye expression, I'm going to say. I might be completely wrong. Feel free to debate me in the comments, my lovelies. I love a bit of discourse, but let me know what you think. It's more than I thought you ever would. I, I didn't even think I'd put on... Four inches around your tummy and I your really, hips. Really That's the look that. that I do when someone's like, oh, you can't have that. So with half a stone weight gain and a right. fabulous four inches on her waist, Yasmin no longer looks like a bag of bones, but has a fabulous figure to die for. But you also just said that she piled on the but pounds. But has Yasmin's oversized opposite, Daryl, managed to end his oversized. overeating once and for all and feel the benefits of his healthy new diet? have managed to lose four stone three pounds. No way! That's more than I thought. Well, yeah. as well. well done! Are you In three that? months, yeah. that's I mean, fast. that's more than my son weighs. Daryl's also lost a whopping seven inches off his waist. I think that's fantastic. Four stone in three months is quite quick, isn't it? <laughs> I really, I'm so oh, That's happy. cool. That's great. And you're going to keep it up? Yes. Now, has that really encouraged you? Yeah. When I saw Daryl, it was brilliant. You could see, um, you know, that he'd lost weight. I wasn't sure how much, but you could see that he was a lot healthy. He looked happier as well. I did think that Yasmin would struggle with it, um, but it's brilliant. She's definitely, you know, put on over half a stone and she looks a lot better for it. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. It means that I can live a normal life again. When I first met Yasmin, she was utterly convinced that she couldn't eat wide varieties of foods because of intolerances and allergies. And I think what she's learned over these three months is that actually these intolerances don't exist and that she can eat a lot more than she originally thought she could. That's why she's put on weight. She's looking healthier and so much happier. If you're affected by any of the issues raised in this programme and would like more information, then log on to www.channel4.co.uk forward slash help. Next week on Super Sa Right, no, okay. That's the end of the show, Biscuit. That's the end. Are you ready for my final thoughts, Mr. Biscuit? Are you ready? I do, in fact, have some pretty strong opinions about what we've seen today. The very end section there that kind of explained the journey as, like, overall positive and the way that Dr. Jessen was just like, oh, those things that she had a problem with, in fact, don't exist. I just, I just don't know. I just don't know how I feel about that because there is recent data to suggest that women just aren't listened to when we go to our doctors about health conditions and health problems. There's a bias being like, well, women don't do any of all that. No, that doesn't really happen. No, that's all complete nonsense. There is a bias that exists there and it has been studied and shown to exist. I feel like there's lots of to be said about using different wording there. Like you can say, we have yet to find any cause. That's a bit more sensitive than just saying, ah, oh, she's making it up, doesn't exist. Let me know what you think about that specific scenario there because I've gone to the doctor before for things and because I'm a woman and I'm trans, I have had people just say to me, oh, well, that's, that's just that. You know, that's, have you, have you tried not doing that? Next, I want to talk about the odd section there that was Dr. Gillian McKeith's battle against big bums. How inappropriate was that to be like, we're banning, we're banning a part of your body 
I mean, I know it was for like drama for TV, but I'm still a bit like, she had such an attitude of like, well, you're all actually disgusting, aren't you? Because look at the state of you. Very villain, just unlikable. And the thing is, I love a villain. I love the villains of shows, but they have to be like edgy and fun and likable in a way. I don't know. She just comes across as like rude, entitled. And as I said earlier, that aunt that seems to have just hated you since the day you were born and just everything you do is a problem. Just she comes across like that kind of a person. Next, I wanna talk about the narrator in this show. What is that? You could not get away with talking to me face to face with any of these ways. What was it? The Derbyshire Diet Dodger, the Grub Guzzler. No. If someone was like, oh, that's Luxaria, the lollipop lady of Grub Guzzler Lane or something, I'd be like, excuse me, lady. I'm going to hit you with this now. <laughs> like. Just, you cannot, like, I just don't know how that was in any way, shape, or form, like, allowed. I mean, I know this was in the time when, like, reality TV, especially in British TV history, was just getting so intense. Fat Families just came just after this. We also had As Botine to Beauty Queen happening around this sort of time. We had Trini and Susanna being awful around this sort of time. We also had, oh gosh, what else have we watched here on the Chanel? Oh yeah, we've also had 10 Years Younger, which is also filled with, like, oh, and you're just really flat-chested and awful. Like, I don't know, British TV around this sort of time just sort of revolved around shaming people and sort of insulting them, but maybe not directly to them, but just sort of like passively aggressively afterwards. In the end, my lovelies, I do feel like this show tried to come off in a really positive way, but I think aspects that made it a bit cheaper were the bad narration and perhaps maybe like a little bit of like medical elitism. Also pitting the guests against each other didn't really like vibe well with me. Let me know what you guys think about what we've seen in today's episode of Super Size vs Skinny in the comments box below because I think it's been a bit of a roller coaster. With that my loves, it's time for the Patreons. You can see yourself scrolling past on the screen right here. Yes you can. Today's Instagram shout out goes to Ursula Vale. Thank you so much for following me over on Instagram with Stunning Woman on the go. And if you want to be in with a chance of being featured in my next video's Instagram shout out, make sure you follow me over on Instagram. It is xxluxaria and I post all my travel and fashion content over there, my lovelies. Yes. Oh, and biscuit content. Once again, I want to say a massive thank you to the top tier Patreons. Alex Ewart Official, Orko Samoji, Ari Adia X, Becky Johnson, Beebles32, Cameron Pittman, Shell Herman, Christina Kyle, ContraPoints, Elizabeth Stone, Emily Worsham, Eric Castillo, Finch Dunham, Hannah Ruth, Jen Martin, Caitlin Wright, Larissa Says Relax, Leanne Jones, Les Banana, Min Min TM, Mariah Sherman, Miss Kiss, No Vembrix, Paula Rivera, Ryan Loves Rory, Steph Utech, Taylor Martin, and Vicky Walsh. And you know what, my lovelies? I'm gonna leave it on the note of if you feel like there is a problem with your body or something that you're experiencing and the first doctor you go to is like, no, don't be so ridiculous, always try and get a second opinion. Yes. And with that, my loves, I will see you in the next one. <gasps> Goodness.